Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. Uh, apologies for the noise in the background, 3D printing off uh, some stuff. So, But uh, what I wanted to do was do a quick video of the unboxing of our new soldering workstation for uh, the lab. So again, um, just got this new workstation and just wanted to do an unboxing. It's a, it's a multi-function workstation and kind of fancy. Uh, appears to come in multiple parts. So uh, pull it out here so you can see the parts coming out. Multiple different tips for the soldering iron. Uh, it's also meant for um, surface mounted parts and it actually, as you can see here, comes with the uh, heat gun, which what I really like about it is I don't do that much work with surface parts, but I like the idea of a heat gun for heat shrink tubing. I do do a lot with heat shrink tubing, and I think that would be uh, real handy to have. So here we have the soldering iron, and uh, you can see it comes with a pretty fine tip and uh, various protection on the tip for that. And uh, also has a uh, replacement tip, coarser tip. Now, the big one of the big questions I have is uh, where does one get replacement tips for it? But for the price I pay for it, maybe I just buy a whole unit, unit which is sad. But um, so I think I'm going to have to turn this upside down to get the remainder out. Oh, okay. So note to self, it's not a good way to do it, but it did work. those parts move the box out of the way um, you know as you can see it comes with a fairly big unit we'll move the rest of the parts over here um, here's the back side let's remove it from plastic easier said than done it appears on the Back, they have a power switch and fuse. And it's wrapped around that big cable up front. So in the back, you can see it has the fuse, it has the on-off switch. And if I turn around to the front, and this is a little bit unwieldy. So I don't know. There does seem to be some kind of wires in here, but uh, I wonder. There must be a pump or something inside there, because this is this tube is. I don't know. <clears throat> Seems to be pretty empty. So I'm going to carefully, if I can get this open, cut this plastic away without cutting the, the cord because it does seem to be wrapped around there. Now I can just pull this out. Now the tape's cut off. Okay. So we now seem to have that. Let's take some of these plastic pieces out of the way. Put those in the box. So again, we have the unit. So after shutdown, system automatically detects gun temperature. When the temperature is below the safe value, the station will automatically cut off power. So apparently, the gun keeps going as long as it thinks it's hot. And so it doesn't seem to want to sit too. Slow. So it doesn't want to sit too level here. So I'm not sure what the story is there. Let's take a quick look. It looks like it's all okay on the bottom. Got these bottom pieces. Uh, okay, so this is kind of humorous. I don't know if you can see this on the, the camera. Before using pay stension. S-T-T-E-N. I think it's pay attention. Um, pre please release bottom red mark screws before using the machine. So now that's an interesting point. Obviously it wants us to take these out. Uh, however, this is just really, this is probably one of those YouTube moments. I hope uh, you can see that. Please pay, pay extension. So, uh, okay, let's, let's pay extension and, uh, excuse my reach remove these screws so 
There's one. There's two. There's three. So I'm not sure what we were just released, but we released something. So let's see if this uh, still doesn't make it sit level. So, well, we could live with that for the time being, anyway. Now, uh, let's see what the instructions say. There's various pieces here, the things. So, two in one rework station. Uh, give some basic instructions how things go together. It does seem to be some kind of heating element inside the uh, gun wand. But, uh, hmm. In typical form, I don't see anything that says how it goes together. Because there's supposed to be a thing on the side for the gun. You know, maybe it's this. Uh, but why would there be holes on both sides? I wouldn't think it would be this. So let's open up this. Yeah, it sounds like the 3D printer is done. So I'm assuming that this just sits in here like this. And then this gets attached over there. There is a strange little bracket that fell out or clip. Uh, I think that must have fell out from this this bag, I think. Yeah, because there's a screw in there about that size and it looks like it has a hole. These are these are fittings for the uh, heated end. So uh, if I get one out. Yeah, so there's screws, so that's what it goes to. So this heated end goes on here, and then this blasts the hot air out here so you can uh, reflow solder on a surface, surface mount board. So I, think, I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, let's turn this a little bit. Let's see how this works. I assume it's going to go something like this, and it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I kind of figured that. I would have thought there would be a better way to do this, but this is more than likely just reused from somewhere else, this bracket. I'm not sure what the heck this piece does. That's interesting. Again, I think this is supposed to sit around something like this. I have to go back on the eBay instructions and look at that, or in the page where I bought it, and see what it looks like. And this has these aircraft connectors, looks like, if I get out of the light, by pin that plug in here and then so let's 
let's plug in the uh, rework station. Um, again, pardon my read. So, okay, so I don't know if you can see this piece. Um, let's see if I got something propped up. Let's take this wall work so maybe you can see it. So, um, so we turn on hot air. Yep, it's blowing hot air. So you can see the temperature. It's getting hot fast. Oh, I like this. So this is now at 229 degrees. Um, you can tell that the flashing of the light, this light is on the same, this, that I'm using for to lighten it up for the uh, camera is on the same circuit. You can see it, you know, turning on and off over here. But this, this produces just, I think, the perfect amount of uh, heat and stuff for a heat shrink tube. And I think I can put a, like a, a smaller end on it um, to hit the tube. I like that a lot. You know, because I've got, um, I'm going to watch I don't burn myself here. I'm not paying attention. I've got uh, a heat gun in this drawer down here. I could pull it out, plug it in. I, I'm going to love just being able to hit this. So it's also, you know, temperature, so you can set the temper temperature of it. Now, I'm not sure. Oh, you can even set the airflow. So you can turn down the airflow. So that must, there is a pump inside here. This, the case is vibrating. So that must be what those screws went to, some kind of, um, like, aquarium pump. It's not huge, but it's it's perfect for heat shrink tubes. I'm very happy about it. And, and imagine reworking surface out of stuff, so I like that. And then again, we can turn on the uh, the soldering iron, and uh, it does warm up pretty quick. So you can see the, the temperature rising on it. So uh, so both are running right now. Um, it does appear to be grounded. I, I Probably one of the things I want to check to see if it runs back to ground. I'm assuming I would hope as such there's you know five connectors in this, so uh, you can see it's just burning off the the oily residue to keep it from rusting. It sits nicely in there, and that piece is open. Wow, I like this a lot. Um, I mean, well, so far you just see me take it out of the box, so I <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't done too much with it. But, uh, you know, so far everything seems to work. Uh, the only interesting thing is, that, you know, just kind of from a natural standpoint, these two seem to be flip soldering and air. With the air gun on this side, I would have thought it been turned around. But again, and again, I can live with that. And I like the fact you can adjust the amount. Ooh, that gets hot if you turn down the air. So the less air, the hotter it seems to get. So you can adjust, seems to adjust the heat with that, so... But uh, anyways, I'm very happy with this. This uh, So far, uh, this really looks like a good unit if I can try to stay out of the light. So anyways, um, this is the unboxing of the soldering station. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's actually give it a shot. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, I probably should turn on the heat. So yeah, it work, works pretty good with that. So very happy. Again, that's working, so we'll turn off the hot air for the time being. Uh, see, see, I've turned off the hot air, but the pump is still running, and so until it cools this down, um, that's what the sticker up here says, the pump will keep running until this, the temperature drops. So if you're interested in this, I'll put a link, uh, I'll put a link below if you're interested in the soldering station. It wasn't a lot of money, I think it was around 60 bucks shipped. Um, okay, so the air the air pump's turned off, so I now just have the soldering iron turned on over here. Uh, so again, uh, I think it was well worth the money. The, the combined um, air gun um, soldering iron combination, you know, yeah, you can get a cheaper soldering iron. I like the idea of being able though to control the temperature of the soldering iron. When uh, I was really involved in this before, I had one, and uh, it was an old Willer, and uh, didn't have a digital readout, but it had, you know, graduated with a potentiometer for rough temperature, and I really like that for, you know, different smaller components, because, you know, the one thing, you you don't want to keep the heat to a minimum um, when you start to deal with surface mount components or attaching wires to surface mount uh, PCBs, and I think this will be a good combination. So anyways, if this uh, video was interesting and it helped you, please hit like below. 
uh, it's free. It helps us out. It helps us make more of these videos. And uh, keep watching because, again, I uh, bought this. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff coming up. One of the, uh, again, excuse my reach videos we're going to be doing is we got this new power supply module in. Um, actually, it's a, sort of a regulator step down. Very interesting. It does volts, does amps. So we're going to integrate this into the laser project uh, to measure the output of the laser. The, the current output and adjust it for optimal because the um, we have a 12 volt power supply and while the laser will work with a 12 volt power supply it really likes 7.2 volts so the idea is to use this to step down to 7.2 volts and then use this to monitor the current draw of the laser so anyways uh, I'll be doing a video uh, on this pretty soon but just um, to show you some of the stuff that's coming up and then of course we've got the um, 40 watt CO2 laser project going uh, let's turn off the siren. I don't need that anymore. We've got that going. We've got a new laser coming for the diode laser project. So uh, a lot of stuff happening here in the lab. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff uh, continuing, especially into the holidays. I expect to, uh, well, I've got some time off the day job a little bit, uh, throw in more, you know, quite a few more videos, especially around the holiday time when people got uh, you know some time to do some uh, projects and uh, watch them. So, Anyways, if you like this, also subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.